Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to be covering blocking and non-blocking assignments. Both of these assignments get executed inside sequential blocks. So sequential blocks are the ones that are surrounded by begin and end statements. And blocking assignments, just like their name, block the execution. So they don't they cannot allow the next time in the next line to execute until the current line finishes. Non-blocking assignments on the other hand do not block the execution so if you have a bunch of non-blocking assignments they're all gonna execute at the same time. So let's move on to an example. We have a test module here we're gonna define some uh, some variables, some fields A, B, C, D, E and then we're gonna create our sequential a block here surrounded by begin and end so let's assign A to 0, let's assign B to 1 let's assign C to be B let's delay D by 15 time ticks and then change it to 1 and then let's delay E by 15 and then change it to 1 as well and at the end we're gonna increment A um, and then we're gonna wait a little bit longer five time ticks and then call our finish statement so let's see what happens uh, we, we we're gonna we're gonna look at some waves so let's create a dump bars here and click open EP wave let's run it and our EP wave has been opened so a is 0 as expected at the beginning, B is 1, C gets assigned to B which is also 1, D becomes 1 after 15 time ticks as expected and then after 5 more E becomes 1 and at the same time we increment A which goes from 0 to 1. So this is an example of the blocking statement so they all execute in order and you know according to the waves everything's happening as expected. Uh, so let's change it up and let's do non-blocking. So we're going to try to keep the same code, blocking and non-blocking code in the same code base and I'm just going to use if defs to differentiate between which one's running. Okay, so we did blocking first which is a simple equal sign. So now we're going to do non-blocking. Non-blocking. This is else and then we're going to end it here so once we set this define the code inside here is going to execute of course we now need to change it so I'm going to try to change all of these now to non-blocking statements so they're going to execute all at the same time in parallel one thing to note here is that this delay which by the way delay is non-synthesizable so it can only be used in a test bench or for, for modeling is always blocking so in order to make this statement non-blocking, this delay should be moved to the right hand side here. So basically this will have the effect that D will become 1 after 15 time ticks. Let's do the same for E, but now instead of 5, uh, it really should be 20 because this is going to execute all at the same time. So let's change this to 20 just so you know, we may, we can make it look similar to the previous code and uh, we'll leave this alone for now now since these all execute in parallel at the same time um, we need to increase our delay here because you know the simulation is just going to stop after 5 time ticks but we wanted to keep going uh, last time it went on for 25 so let's change this to 25 alright we have our code here so let's set that define on the command line define non-blocking Okay, and this is non-blocking. Let's run it. And right away you see some interesting things here. First of all, A is always X. Well, the reason it's always X is because we drive it to zero and at the same time we try to increment it, which is a conflict and this, this creates an X. B is one as expected. C is also X. Now why is C X? Well, because when this statement executes, B is not one yet because these, these two statements execute in parallel so B is initially X 
and when and then when C gets assignment from B, C becomes X as well, so it never changes from X. And then D changes to 1 after 15 time ticks, and E changes to 1 after 20 time ticks. Um, so let's try to fix this a little bit. Uh, so we one we have this issue with A. Um, so I'm not going to do a complete fix here. I'm just going to clean up a little bit. Obviously, this is this is an issue here, and then this is also an issue. So we're just going to do a, a, a quick clean up here. Okay, now we have something something close uh, to the previous simulation. The only thing is that A doesn't get incremented at at time twenty. Um, so this is the basic idea of blocking and non-blocking statements. Now I'm going to demonstrate their use in a simple um, always always block. So I'm going to do a simple uh, dot designer to test. It's going to have a couple inputs: clock, reset, and it's going to output some values. So it's going to output um, f g h. So I'm going to have an always block, always at posage clock or posage reset because we're going to need to reset this uh, this module. Begin and end. So if reset, we're going to send some set some defaults here. So we're going to set f to five, g to eight and h to c and then when the clock actually fires we're gonna swap all of these around so we're gonna do um, g becomes f h becomes g and then f becomes h gfh now as you can see there's obviously a problem here because we're using blocking statements so they execute in order so by the time we get to here h has now become the value of g uh, so I'm going to run a sim to demonstrate this. First, I'll uh, hook it up over here to the test bench. Wire FGH. I'm, I'm going to use the proper um, connection by name here. Reset and F. G H. So this is going to hook it up. Um, now we need some stimulus. So we're going to put the stimulus up here. We're going to initialize clock to zero. And then for reset, we're actually going to use use a non-blocking assignment. We're going to initialize it to one, but then we're going to change it to zero after let's say five time ticks and then we also need a free running clock so we're gonna have an always I'm gonna give it a, a period of four always clock toggles alright let's run this and see what happens okay we have we have some issues here Okay, we uh, forgot the end module back here. All right, let's try it now. All right, we have our clock, and then we have FGH uh, reset. When resets high, they all get set. But then something's weird. Weird's happening. Let me double check to make sure it looks fine. 
So in our attempt to swap all of these, obviously um, G got, got assigned to F, which is 5, and then H got assigned to G, which is also 5, so they all got changed to 5. Um, so before trying to figure out how to fix this, let me show you how to do this with a non-blocking assignment. So I'm gonna do the if def here, if def non-blocking, which we already have set, so this code's gonna execute. Let me make a copy of this, and if and this should be else. Let me change this all to non-blocking here. Now we're going to see what we expected, all of these to be swapping every clock cycle. We have non-blocking already set back here, so let's run it. Okay, 5HC, C58, 8C5, so they're, they're swapping each, other, each other's values. Once again, because non-blocking executed at the same time. Okay, so let's let's see how we can fix the issue we had with the blocking assignments. Well, in order to do the swapping with the blocking assignments, we're going to need a temporary uh, temporary variable. So we're going to create a temporary variable three to zero, call it temp, and then let's try to fix this here. So we're going to assign temp to uh, we have a FGH here, so let's assign temp to H and then G and then let's let's reorder this a little bit. F becomes H H becomes temp um, F becomes temp because it's the same as H H becomes F. Let's reorder this. And then G. G becomes F. G becomes F. H becomes G. So at this point, uh, I think this looks correct. So let's, let's try it out and test it. So let's run it. We're running non blocking down here. Okay, so this looks like it's behaving as expected. So that was the fix um, uh, using, using the blocking. That's what we're using the blocking. Just to verify we're using the blocking, we can um, expand our scope here, run it, and then we should be able to see the temp, temp variable here. Um, as you can see, the temp variable is changing down here. Okay, this concludes this tutorial on blocking and non-blocking statements. Thank you for watching.